Two other characters, Cheng and Zori. Cheng is, is a smart guy, and he can program like crazy. Zori is always looking for real-world stuff. She doesn't like this theory and this abstract nonsense you know, that professors find fascinating. She, she's down to earth. Show me how I'm going to make a living doing this. All right, so Jing is a good programmer, and he remarked to Zori that he could easily detest, detect whether a large graph was connected and if it was disconnected, whether it had any loose vertices. Zori wasn't impressed because she couldn't understand why anybody would care about either issue. But she wanted to put Ching in his place. And she had read about something on the web, didn't really understand it herself, didn't care. But the question was, if you were given a graph on two end vertices, does it have a clique of size n? So she asked Ching, can you do that? And, and Ching hadn't, hadn't, hadn't thought about it. He said, well, you know, but now he's put on the spot. You know, you're put on the spot. What are you going to do? You're going to say, well, yeah, of course I can. So he said he, he could. Now, if Carlos was around, would Carlos perhaps have whispered to him, you know, be careful, Ching. You, you, might, you might be overreaching here. Just, or maybe, I don't know. So some questions are for thought. If you're given a graph with n vertices, which of the problems are hard and which are easy? And what, what does easy and hard mean? Well, what? We're, we're beginning to understand this. We're beginning to understand this when we talk about problem size and we talk about running time. But for now, the words easy and hard don't, don't have any precise meaning. Is it hard or easy to answer? Is G connected? Now, now all of these questions are yes, no questions. Yes, no. Is G connected? Yes or no? Does G have a path on at least n over 2 vertices? So at least half. Does it have a cycle of at least n over 2? Does it have a clique of size at least n over 2? These are all yes, no questions. And now the, the thought. And this really goes back to our first lecture again. If two individuals are arguing about this, you know, some debate whether the answer should be yes or no, who has the easier task? How, defending a yes answer or defending a no answer? Okay. And now I hope that by this point in the course, everybody in the room says, give me the yes, because I can defend yes. If I say the answer for G is connected, here's the way I'll do it. I will give you back the information for each pair from your 867 vertices. I will give you the path from this one to that one. I'll list it. And then you can check it, or the referee can check it, are all these paths in the graph. I can do that. If the answer, does it have a path on at least n or 2, I will just give you the path. I will say vertex 27, then 52, then 93, then 107, then 17. I'll list it. And then the referee can say, well, let me count the number of vertices. Well, yep, there's 512. That's half of... 867, they're all distinct, yep. Now let me check them. Is that an edge? Is that an edge? Is that an edge? Is that an edge? I checked all those. I mean, that's some, that's some work to do, but it's very methodical. Very, very, even UGA students can do that. Usually. Dean's list students. So yes, I can do that. Cycle, same thing. Cleat, same thing. But how do you defend a no answer? Look at the last one, or the sec third one, or the second one. How
how do you defend a no answer? I tried, and I couldn't find one. Not a very good defense. Not a very good defense. If at all possible, we want in practical problems to be able to, when the answer is going to be yes, we want to be able to describe a process through which we will determine that the answer is yes. And if at all possible, we want this to go both ways, when the answer is not yes, we want to be able to explain that it is no, and it is definitely no, and here's why it is no. And such examples will never fall in the category, it is only no, because I don't know how to do it. Question. Put more burden of proof on no rather than, I'm saying no rather than saying yes. Well, we can. It's the same proof. You know, if somebody says no, I, I, I say, I don't believe you. When a person says yes, and I say, I don't believe you, they, then they hand me the evidence. They hand me, in, we call it in computer science, the certificate. They hand me the certificate, which, is the, which can then be checked by the referee. But how do you hand the, a certificate that says, I spent 10 hours looking for it, and I couldn't find it? You didn't spend your 10 hours productively. That's what the boss says. If you were more clever, you would have done it. So you, you can't defend yourself against such. But if you, can, if you have a systematic process that you can mathematically prove will either lead to the correct answer or it will explain to you why definitively, beyond any argument, the answer is no, then you're in the winning position. That's Whenever possible, that's where we want to go. And we will learn of some where there doesn't appear to be one. And I repeat this story several times. There are some problems that we will talk about that if you figure out how to solve them effectively, here's the strategy. You come talk to me about it first privately and explain your ideas to me. I'll check them and then if they're right, you and I will go public together. You know, think of all those wonderful photo ops. You know, I'll be standing, big smile like this, right? And we'll, we'll split the money. <laughs> oh, okay, you can have the lion's share. That number four is tough. The reason Zori gave it to Sheng is that she had read that it was tough. There's no human alive that knows how to do that. What about number one? Is that, what's your intuition tell you? Tough? Easy? Easy. Number one, one is easy. What about number two? Yeah, what, what, what are you doing? So he said it was easier than four. At this, at this point in our course, uh, you're not supposed to know the answers of this. But, but, but so, so you know, you're having opinions is fine. I mean, there, there is no wrong opinion here. Yeah, actually, there is. But... Uh, Well, I, okay, and number two, I ask you, does it have a, a path on at least n over two vertices? I could have asked you, does it have a path on n vertices? That's the Hamiltonian path problem. And I already let the cat out of the bag when I said that one's hard. And the cycle of size n over two, I could have asked you, is there a cycle of size n? That's the Hamiltonian cycle problem, and that one's hard too. Actually, all of these are hard except the first one. There's only one easy one. Is, is G connected? 
And we will, we will see that that one is easy. No, not today. But two, three, and four, those are hard. They're not on your homework. But if you've managed to solve one, remember the, the, the routine. You come to me in private first.